All right, guys, welcome to another video. And today we're talking about the Poco F3, the Mi 11X, also known as the Redmi K40 in China. Now, this is sort of a new ROM called Project Zephyrus. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I installed it this morning, ran a few benchmarks, explored the user interface, and I thought, hey, this does deserve a quick review. So that's what we're going to do today. Quick review of this particular ROM. So before we get into the details, please subscribe because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content. Now, without further ado, hello, awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. All right, so before we begin the review, I am trying to shorten my intros. A lot of you have been complaining about that. I take it as a positive feedback and the intros will keep getting under 30 seconds. And I hope you guys like this particular change. Please share it with everyone who have similar devices so that they can take benefit of this amazing content that we make on a daily basis. Now, what do we have here? We have our Indian Mi 11X running project Zephyrus ROM, which is based on Android 12. Now, it does say Proton knockoff because it's, you know, it's heavily based on that particular ROM. Now you need to have the latest firmware to flash this particular ROM. As far as device changelog is concerned, you do see that the list is quite comprehensive. So I won't be reading through all of this because that will unnecessarily bore you guys and make the video longer. But what we have here is clean flash mandatory and properly follow installation method. That is what I did. As much as you know, a lot of experience is what I have in flashing ROMs, I always refer to the official recommended way of flashing ROMs and I would recommend you to do the same. If flash fails with K install error, try into TWRV merge, merge snapshot and then retry. I don't know what that means. I didn't have any errors. If you discovered any bug and you had to read notes, feel free to report. Okay, so that's all the boring stuff about the ROM. Now let's actually talk about the real deal. Now, there is a very, very important thing that I have to say, which I keep saying in almost all the Mi 11X videos, is that the ROMs, the custom ROMs for this device are really good quality because the smoothness is just next level. If you, if you were to use this particular device on MIUI, it's good. I'm not saying it's bad, but if you use it on a custom ROM, Trust me, if you are someone who likes a lot of smoothness and speed, you would not go back to MIUI any single day, right? So the moment you boot into this particular ROM, you get this beautiful wallpaper with a bunch of icons on the home screen. And I have installed my choice of applications over here, but you will notice that the ROM comes highly de-bloated. To that matter, I see a camera application over here, which is Google Camera Go, which is a good thing because it does give you some decent quality and you can use it right off the bat. Right now to the left, you have Google feed, which works like a boss on this particular device, be it MIUI, be it the custom ROM. Google feed is smooth, fluid, and it works absolutely fine. No problem whatsoever. If you press and hold on the home screen, you do get home settings in which what launcher do we have? We have the pixel experience launcher available, which is based on Android 12. It works absolutely fine. You do have your Android 12 widgets, which are present and they work absolutely okay. Moving on, you do have the option of wallpaper and style along with themed icons and different color combinations is what you can use. That is really, really fascinating. For me, I don't know. Bonnet UI from the day it was introduced. I'm sort of in love with this particular user interface. As you can see over here, if we go to the yellow mode, the whole UI sort of changes the accent color. And as you can see, Let's actually switch to a different color of wallpaper. Let's go to something, um, say something green or blue or teal or something like that. You have to download these wallpapers. Uh, how long does it take? Because we are on a decent internet connection. Okay, it works. That's fine. So, you know, these color options look really, really nice and they work absolutely okay. So, you know, Monet UI is doing a great job, no problem whatsoever. If you swipe from the top to bottom, you will see that you do have a ton of information over here. Now, apart from this, over here, you have your privacy access styles, which you can enable or disable. If you go to the edit menu, you do have caffeine, extra dim, always on display off, screenshot, sound search, CPU info, that's about it. You don't really have a ton of customization available, again, because this is based on the Proton AOSP ROM. And if you look at the app icon animations, they are so smooth and fluid. They will just, you know, these are very, very good animations. And I really hope someday, you know, device manufacturers have these sort of animations on their skins. I would really, really love to see that. Now, if you go to the Play Store and if you go to settings, 
you will see that the device is certified wideband l1 certification is present your safety net passes by default so not only you can enjoy amazing gorgeous content on this beautiful amoled display you can also use your banking applications without any worry which is always a good thing right now in terms of connectivity wi-fi calling i did not really have any options so everything is working as expected google feed to the left now let's quickly go to the settings menu over here and let's go to about phone if you actually go to android version you do have their logo over here february security patch proton asp version is 12.4 that is basically their source code version is what they're using it does come with a no kernel and we will soon find out how good or bad the performance numbers are as far as this kernel is concerned but let's you know quickly go to the settings menu and see what differentiates this rom from others and I'm not disappointed exactly, but I should tell you this, that in Proton ASP or even in this ROM, you will not find a ton of customization because that's not what Proton ASP is known for. So, you know, if you go to things like apps, you will find important Android 12 features like game dashboard over here. So those things are present. That is a good thing. So if you go to battery, you will see that you do have the thermal profiles option available. Moving on, you do have the battery percentage icon and some sort of customization, not a lot of customization. If you go to sound and vibration, you have music visualizer and clear speaker options present. Under display, you do have some customization over here. So pay attention. You do have the show brightness slider, show brightness slider in quick, quick settings panel, adaptive brightness button, show brightness slider at the bottom is what you can do. As you can see, it comes at the bottom. That is a good thing. Brightness control. Now on lock screen, you have your privacy access over here. And just a moment here, what we have show media art, always on display schedule. You can choose to have always on display on all the time. So 7 a.m., 8 p.m. to 7 a.m. or let's make it 8 a.m. to 7 a.m. So if you turn off the display now, you should have always on display. There you go. It's present colored icon over here and a battery percentage at the bottom that always looks good. I have been a fan of always on display and you see that beautiful Android 12 unlock animation. So, you know, those things are present and they work absolutely fine. You can enable or disable the dark theme, night light, disable night light when showing FOD. Colors can be chosen as boosted and then you have the option of status bar items as well, right? Now moving on, you have fonts, as you can see, real time changing of fonts. That is always a good thing. Let's go back to the default font. Oh, I didn't see that earlier. Icon packs, you can choose Oxygen OS. As you can see, these things change to Oxygen OS. Signal can be changed to round. Wi-Fi can be changed to inside. These are weird looking icons, but you do have the option of increased touch sensitivity. So you don't really have the 180 Hz touch sampling rate, but in the display menu, you do have the option of increased touch sensitivity. Double tap to check the phone is also present. Enable wallpaper zoom, display features, double tap to wake and ambient display. These options are required and available as well. So a few additional options because this ROM is based on Proton USP is what I see here. And that is a good thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing. You do have wallpapers and style over here, which we just explored a small time back. Now, as you can see over here, you have fingerprint unlock. You don't really have face unlock. So as and when the source code of these different ROMs keeps getting updated, you will have face unlock coming to Android 12 because Pixel Experience was the first to bring it and now others are following suit. Now, if you go to system, you do have live translate available over here. Under gestures, you do have a ton of gesture options available, which is a good thing. UDFPS haptic feedback, vibrate when touching UDFPS icon. This is for devices which have a fingerprint scanner under the display, right? Now that's everything about settings menu because you do have some customization and that is a good thing. Now, what about the performance? So the first thing that we will check is we'll go to Google Photos over here. Backing up from this pixel is free and unlimited. So unlimited storage is available. Now, as you can see, the CPU throttled to 81% of its max performance. I think these are early builds. Probably that's the reason it is throttling that much. And uh, average score was 193.905 GIPS. If you go to Antutu benchmark over here, 
you will see that the score is also low over here, 620, 321. And Geekbench does the same thing, 829 and 2658. But in the multitasking menu, it looks fine and it works okay. The ROM is absolutely smooth, no problem whatsoever. Apart from that one force close of the launcher, I've not had any issues with the calling connectivity or any problems as such. The battery backup on this particular ROM is pretty rock solid, so no problems there. And the fast charging works absolutely okay as well. So all in all, this particular ROM Zephyrus or Project Zephyrus based on Proton AOSP is something you should definitely try if you're a custom ROM guy. It will give you good experience and maybe your gaming experience will define you want to use it as a daily driver or not. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video. Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.